Mao, The Untold Story by Zheng Cheng and John Holliday. Mao Zedong was the leader of the Chinese Communist Party and he took over as supreme leader of China in the aftermath of World War II and he ruled until his death in 1976. Uh, throughout his life he was completely dedicated to ideas around communism but as this book uh, accuses him he was also extremely dedicated to the idea of himself. This was a very egocentric man who professed on being to the side of the people but that was just a tool so that he could control people more effectively. Watching this man's rise to power is horrifying because in the conversation of who's the most evil person who has ever lived Mao is definitely up there. If you go by body counts of how many people are killed, uh, how many people whose deaths uh, he's responsible for, uh, you have to give it to Mao because he outpaced Hitler and Stalin easily. This is because he took over uh, a country that had 550 million people. Uh, so just in terms of scale, when he does something bad, it has a much more uh, damaging effect. But even more to the, the point, he used terror in more explicit ways than Hitler and Stalin did. Where they used terror to get control, of course, he used terror in that he had people executed in horrifying, terrible ways, and he forced people to watch and participate and sometimes even rejoice and clap and cheer it on. And the horrifyingness of it all is part of the reason for his power. Like people obeyed him because they were so terrified of all these awful things that he was doing. Once he got into power, there are three categories of failures that summarize his reign over China. First, culturally, I already talked about how he used terror, um, but once he got to be absolute ruler, it became even more so. He started the Cultural Revolution in the 60s and this was the rejection of capitalism. He wanted to root all of it out of China completely. And so he would be explicitly telling young people to be violent. He was encouraging violence. Uh, and violence was the result. Hundreds of thousands were killed or millions. We don't know the exact number, but it was absolutely devastating and horrifying. Also, it was particularly counterproductive because the educated uh, were targeted in a lot of these and a lot of the people who you'd think you'd really need to have a good balanced society. He seemed to have this strange idea that peace can only happen after he's taken something over, which is a convenient uh, excuse to try to take over the world, which was his uh, mission. He kept having these plans of surpassing Russia and the United States as the dominant power in the world. He played a role in the Korean War, in the Indo in wars in Indochina, and terrible, terrible results uh, in those countries, of course. He was very set on getting nuclear weapons, and he devastated his country economically to accomplish this, and that's point number three. Economically, he's responsible for the Great Leap Forward. The Great Leap Forward has to be one of the worst governmental initiatives in the history of mankind. He collectivized the farming industry uh, to supposedly maximize output and encourage work at a level never before seen. One of the main reasons he did this was because he needed uh, economic output to pay for all of his military ambitions. He took food from the peasants to give to Russia to pay for his nuclear ambitions and all the other delusions that he has in his mind. And he's quoted as saying that the peasants have plenty of food. And he, you can see him, he keeps cutting back the, ra the amount of food that he's rationing to his peasants. One of the reasons is he has the idea that peasants are hiding food even though, according to this author, he knows that they aren't. And he just knows that he's going to starve people, but he just doesn't care. In all these actions that he's taking, tens of millions of people are dying and hundreds of millions of lives are being destroyed or ruined in some way. And at the center of it all, there's this megalomaniac who is completely delusional in his view of the world. He said that half of China might have to die in order for him to achieve his goals. But to him, like, that's worth it. 
And from reading this book, you get the sense that he doesn't have any sort of notion that he is, has any connection to the peasants. He is the ruler, they are the peasants. He lives very wealthily and has all the food that he wants because he's the ruler. And then the peasants, they give it to him because he is doing them the great service of leading them. Um, and it, it's like no, there, there's no contradiction in any of this in his mind. So the author of the book lived through the Cultural Revolution. Uh, and so you can tell that on every page of this book, there is extreme hatred of Mao Zedong. It's hard to tell sometimes if this book is uh, the personal bias of the author or if there is legitimate research going into it. But I tend to favor the latter because she has a lot of sources on the points that she's making and she is doing a lot of anticipation of counter arguments. So overall, it was a very engaging, interesting read um, and also extremely horrifying. My conclusion from reading this book is that studying the life of Mao Zedong is like taking a gut punch to your sense of humanity. Uh, so I guess the lesson of the story is let's not do anything like this ever again. I'm going to give this book four and a half stars.